when we see there's an opportunity, there's okay, like, oh, one day we have an idea, then we start working on it, right? Um, but once we have a bunch of these ideas going to a somewhat mature state, we start thinking about how they can play together. Was there a specific feature that was in the design of Vue 3 that didn't make it to launch? Um, and if so, can you tell us a little bit about the process of kind of separating out that planned feature from the core release? Yeah, um, for example, like the, the we, we actually had a branch that experimented with time slicing. Okay. So like the concurrent like feature, like in React, essentially allows you to split up the work of components and then essentially if you are stuck in CPU time for over a frame, we break it up a little bit. So we experimented with that, but um, turns out it adds so much complexity, but eventually the outcome that we tested in some real world apps wasn't that impressive, <laughs> the game, because it's, um, I wrote a long form response in one of the issues because one of the users actually asked, like, why did you remove it? Yeah. So I wrote a long response to it. And the gist of it is um, time slicing only helps with slicing up pure CPU work, that, like pure computation in JavaScript. But it doesn't really help with the DOM operations uh, because if you slice up the DOM operations, you risk your um, what we call tearing. So you, your, your state will be in an inconsistent state. Yeah. Uh, so all the DOM operations needs to be flushed synchronously. So that means if you have a really big update, the DOM is likely more likely to become the bottleneck, which time slicing really doesn't help with. Mm -hmm. And then we profiled the pure CPU time that we spent in Vue compared to say React. And we, we noticed that um, we've already done a lot of work in the template compilation to try to optimize everything as much as possible. So although Vue uses virtual DOM underneath, the template compiled output is actually more optimized render function. It gives a lot, leaves a lot of compile time, analyze the hints so that the runtime can take fast paths. So the runtime actually skips a lot of work uh, because of the compilation step. So, and, and developers are lazy. They don't want to <laughs> think about this all the time, right? That's yep, a reality. Sure, of so, yeah, absolutely. So, so the result is most React apps, they actually over render by default. But Vue apps, because um, first of all, we have fine-grained reactivity. Second, we do compile time optimizations, which React doesn't really do. Although technically you can do some of them with right. JSX, their default transform is a like full reconciliation at runtime. So um, combined with these, we just see like we Vue just doesn't spend as much as time in CPU in a typical application, and there's not much this sort of large cascading updates that yep. spends a lot of time in CPU just trying to reconciliate the views. So in the end, we just concluded it's not worth it for you. The, yep. the complexity and the eventual gain is just not a good trade-off. Um, the next one I have for you is, as Vue 3 started to become a bit more widely adopted, there seems to be a second generation of the ecosystem. Uh, Vite is supersedes, superseding Vue CLI. Uh, Pina is gaining traction as a more simple approach to state management compared to Vue X, things like that. Um, so I'm just wondering what your kind of general opinion is on the on the Vue library ecosystem and tooling and just kind of the way that it's evolving. Overall, we I think the, the way the Vue ecosystem works is we have a loosely uh, decentralized but still somewhat coordinated approach to it. So first of all, each layer or piece of the framework, like the router or the state management or the build tooling, right? They can, they have their own evolution tracks like uh, Eduardo will work on the router and Pina. So a lot of work is done by the individual like motivation from a team member. Like I created Vue uh, initially as a sort of experiment. I didn't mm -hmm. expect it to become a full blown sure. thing that can fully replace VCI, but it yeah. ended up it did, right? So a lot of times it's like we experiment uh, on ideas and then if we find them good enough, we work on them more and then when we realize it has potential we start to coordinate across the ecosystem the upside of this is everybody gets more freedom uh we don't really sort of set a deadline say okay you need to come up with a new version of vx in the next right. five months right we don't do that mm -hmm. uh usually we when we see there's an opportunity there's okay like oh one day we have an idea then we start working on it right yeah. 
Um, but once we have a bunch of these ideas going to a somewhat mature state, we start thinking about how they can play together. And like I think these new options, they grew and, and they, they came about very organically. But when they eventually flourish, we try to put them together, and it becomes a new set of standard for you <laughs> as a framework. Uh, so that's generally how we do it. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And that's interesting because, admittedly, I didn't know too much about kind of the the team dynamics. So it's interesting to kind of learn a, a bit about sort of how the team uh, works together. Um, so moving moving along, the next question I have for you is: It says there's a fairly large movement. Towards using just the included features of Vue three instead of third party libraries. Now that we have the composition API, uh, do you think there's a better way forward? It says it seems that there's a trend among fairly large frameworks such as React with people ditching third party libraries and using features provided by hooks and suspense. Do you think this is just the general direction of modern frameworks are moving in, or do you have a different opinion? Um, so to be honest, I'm not sure if there's. Uh, such a trend, like okay. I'm not sure if this, yeah. if this observation is correct in the first place. Yeah, I think the uh, arrival of hooks and composition API actually it it is beneficial on both sides because it makes it easier for you to create your own abstractions inside your own sort own code base. Yep. Right. If you have you notice you're like doing the same thing in multiple places in your code base, it becomes very easy for you. To abstract it into, say, hooks directory or a composable directory, mm -hmm. uh, and which then you can reuse all over your project. But at the same time, it also makes it easier for libraries to be written. And I think the benefit of this is um, Composition API and hooks makes reusability a first-class concept in the framework. Yeah. Right. So the library that you are using are probably written in similar ways that you created your own composables, and you can. Turn your own composables into a library if you want to. So, um, so I think a lot in a lot of cases, it's not about rely on built-in or rely on external. It's really just uh, the new mechanism, reusability mechanism, just makes it seamless for you to move either in or out of it. So, if it makes sense to use a library, you can use a library because it's pretty much the same thing. It's just like import use X from either from a package or from your own directory, but right. the way you use it will be the same inside the components, right? So it's much better than say in the past, it's like everything inside your framework is written, inside your code base is written in one way and where every library come, it's, comes with its own way of right. being integrated into your framework. So I think that's uh, that's an improvement in general. Like for Vue, like we have the Vue use library which is extremely useful. It just comes with so much uh, useful utilities. Uh, so a lot of, I, I think uh, Vue use is probably the best thing that's happened to Composition API. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a lot of stuff you don't really want to write yourself over and over again. <laughs>